Today we're going to look at the Medicine Buddha song and I'm going to show you the guitar part as I play it. Um, you see I've got the cap on the second fret. The song works best in B minor, for my voice at least, and that's the key that I usually do it in. Um, but with the capo on the second fret, I'm going to be playing A minor shapes. So I'll, re I'll refer to the, the chords as if it was in A minor. Um, now this song is in three sections. The first part has the English words. The second part has the Portuguese words. And the third part has the Tibetan mantra for the Medicine Buddha. And we'll take it section by section. It's quite simple, the first couple of sections. The third section is the tricky part because the rhythm of the mantra is quite irregular in terms of the rhythm of where the beats fall. And it really helps to know how to sing the mantra before attempting the guitar part. It's very difficult to count the beats, but once you can sing the mantra, the guitar part will fall into place underneath the voice. But let's take it section by section. The first section, um, simple. Um, one thing to note is that the melody starts on this note on A and then it goes down to this low G. Hail to the Buddha, to the medicine Buddha. Now I could play a G chord there when the melody goes down to G like this. Hail to the Buddha, to the medicine Buddha. But it feels a bit clumsy trying to do, to do all that. So what I tend to do is just play that note, but keep the hands in an A minor shape, like this. Hail to the Buddha, to the medicine Buddha, and then it goes to E minor, and back to A minor. Hail to the Buddha, to the medicine Buddha, by Sajya Guru. And the next part, hail to the Supreme Lord of Healing. That's a similar thing. Um, I'm keeping these figures in a basic A minor shape and I'm just using this finger to articulate the main notes of the melody. Hail to the, hail to the Lord of Supreme Healing. So this note da, 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 goes up and down there, but these two fingers stay as if it was an A minor chord. Hail to the Lord of Supreme Healing. And then when we hit this note, now we're on a C major chord. So effectively, it only has three chords in this section, the A minor, the E minor, back to A minor, and then up to C, down to A minor. So let's try that again, and um, I'll count in so you can play along with me if you like. One, two, three, four. Hail to the Buddha, to the medicine. Sentient 
next section down. Um, it's quite simple. C, G, E, A minor, C, G, E minor, A, then it goes up to C. Basic sequences A, G, E, A minor that repeats, and then C, G, E, A minor, C, G, E, A minor. And um, it is possible to articulate a few more of the melody notes incorporated into the chord changes, but I'm just going to keep this really simple. So just follow the chords. May, may all sun champions. Okay, let's go from the very beginning and then we can do this, her, this first section which contains all the English words. One, two, three, four. Hail to the Buddha, to the medicine Buddha, by Sajja Guru. Hail to the Supreme Lord of Healing, by Sajja Guru. feels a shame to, cause, uh, to kind of break the flow of a song like this um, but for the purposes of this um, tutorial here we need to do that so let's have a look at the second section the second section um, the essence of it is that we need to be able to follow the melody um, because it goes Kura, kukura, kukura, kura, kukura. And those parts when it goes down and back up again, it's quite easy for people to become confused. So if you're playing this song and you want people to be able to follow the melody or join in with you, um, those, needs, those notes need to be very clearly articulated. Kura, kukura, kukura, kura, kukura. So we're going down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, 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 up. And that's very important because that sets the rhythm of the melody. Kura kukura kukura kura kukura kukura kura kukura kukura kura kukura kukura. Let's try that again together. One, two, one, two, three, four. Kura kukura kukura kura kukura. 
Now once we get to that point, we can just follow the chords. C, G, E, A minor, O sofrimento de tudo séries aqui na terra. just C, G, E, A minor, same as the first section. But um, the first part, the one that goes kura, kukura, kukura, we could just play an A minor chord through that if it's too tricky to do the, uh, the other notes as I showed you. And then you have to just trust that the voice is going to cut through with the melody. And that would sound like this. Kura, kukura, kukura, kura, kukura, kukura, kukura. So that's also possible, just lightly strumming A minor. Let's try that together. One, two, or one, two, three, four. Kura, kukura, kukura, kura, kukura, kukura. O sofrimento de tudo séries aqui na terra. And so that's the simple version, and it does work. But if you can manage to kura, kukura, kukura, kura, kukura, to articulate those notes, it brings through the character of the song more clearly, which has this very rhythmical aspect. So even when we're singing the Portuguese words, it has the characteristics of a kind of mantra. And to um, just really kind of emphasize in that way works very well for me. So that's the way that I play it. Um, and then the second part of the Portuguese section is the same melody and the same chords and the same basic principle as to how to play it, but it just has slightly different words. Um, so let's together now play through that whole second section, the Portuguese words, both the verses. Here we go, I'm going to count you in. And you might like to get this finger ready on the G string because we're going to start. We're going to start like that. One, two, three, four. because it says kukukurai todas doenças do corpo da mente e do coração but to say all of that do corpo e da mente e do, e da coração is a little bit kind of to squeeze it in something has to kind of give somewhere so it becomes a little bit squeezed kura kukura kukura kura kukura kukura todas doenças do corpo da mente e do coração So the other thing we can look at before we move on to the tricky part, the third and final section with the Tibetan mantra, we can just look at the join between the first and second sections, how that happens. Because when I counted you in a moment ago, I asked you to get this finger ready here so we could go. So how would that work coming out of the previous section? Let's just sing. Um, we'll just sing from that part, moving into the Portuguese words. One, two, three. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and sickness. May all sentient beings lift up the heart and shine in the light. Pura, 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 pura. I hope that's clear. Let's just try that one more time. One, 
two, one, two, three, four. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and sickness. May all sentient beings lift up the heart and shine in the light. Pura kupura 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 Okay, so now the final section. Before we attempt the guitar part for this, it's really important to learn the mantra. And in addition to learning to sing the mantra, equally important is learning where to breathe. Because um, there's a lot of syllables and it kind of rolls on and on and repeats many times. Um, so there are a couple of places that I feel are the best places to breathe. Um, and I can show you those, but you could also just improvise and find your own solutions. Um, well, this is what works for me. So first of all, let's just check the words of the mantra. Te anta hum bekanse bekanse maha bekanse Te anta oh, it's difficult to slow down. Te anta hum bekanse bekanse maha bekanse Maha beken se beken se ranza samungati soha de anta o beken se beken se maha beken se beken se ranza samungati soha de anta o beken se beken se maha beken se beken se ranza samungati soha de anta o beken se beken se it might help you to just mark under the words where it goes down the be can say, be can say, on the be syllable it goes down and then straight back up again. De anta on, be can say, be can say, maha, and then it goes up on the ha, maha, and then it stays up. Maha be can say, be can say, ranza samunga te soha, ranza, on the word ranza, it goes up on. Ranza, the second part of that word. Ranza samunga te so ha, and then down on the last ha. So I'm going to play it slowly, and um, it takes a while to get the hang of this, but um, once you've got it, it just sort of rolls off the tongue quite naturally. Te anta hum be can se be can se maha be can se be can se ranza samunga te soha te anta hum be can se be can se maha be can se be can se ranza samunga te soha te anta hum. Once more, before I go into the breathing, let's just check you've really got this. Um, I'm going to count in this time. One, two, one, two, three, four. Te anta ho be can se, be can se, maha be can se, be can se, ranza samunga te soha. Te anta ho be can se, be can se, maha be can se, be can se, ranza samunga te soha. Te anta ho be can se. Now, some of you may be not used to playing individual notes. As you can see, I play a, a classical style acoustic guitar, but I, also, I use a pick, which is not that common with nylon string guitars. Um, but that works well for me because I love the sound of this kind of guitar. And I love to be able to articulate notes and melodies with the pick. So if you're not used to playing with the pick, then just picking the notes of the melody like this might already be difficult if you're just used to strumming chords. In that case, um, it's still important to learn to sing the mantra before you try and play the chords underneath it, because it's going to help so much to follow, to understand where the chord changes go. So let's just try that without the guitar. I'm going to count in again. One, two, three, four. Te anta hum be 
bekanse bekanse maha bekanse bekanse ranza samonga te so ha te anta hom bekanse bekanse maha bekanse bekanse ranza samonga te so ha te anta hom bekanse bekanse maha bekanse bekanse ranza samonga te so ha te anta okay um now when it comes to breathing the thing that is really helps for me and that I can pass on to you is that the beginning of the mantra is te anta om and so you might think it's natural to breathe before that part but actually that makes it more difficult because it's very difficult to snatch a breath there so what i do is i breathe later on in the mantra and then breathe and then just sing through the beginning of the mantra until I get back to the place where I can breathe. I'll show you. Te anta om bekanse bekanse maha bekanse maha bekanse bekanse ranza samunga te soha te anta om bekanse bekanse maha bekanse bekanse ranza samunga te soha so I'm, I'm breathing after the bekanse. It says bekanse, bekanse, and then I breathe. And then it says maha bekanse, bekanse. And I breathe again. So those are the two places where I breathe. And that seems to be enough for me, just those two places. Te anta o bekanse, bekanse, maha bekanse, bekanse, ranza samunga te soha. Te anta o bekanse, bekanse, maha bekanse, if you feel you're struggling to manage with just those two breaths there's an optional third place where you can breathe which is after the om before the first bekanse and that would be like this te anta om bekanse bekanse maha bekanse bekanse ranza samunga te soha te anta om bekanse bekanse maha bekanse bekanse so let's try that again now with me counting in to make sure we're all together. I'm just going to breathe in the two places because that works well for me. But if you find you gasping for breath, remember the optional third place is after the OM. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Bekanse, Bekanse, Maha Bekanse, Bekanse, Ranza Samunga te soha, Te anta o Bekanse, Bekanse, Maha Bekanse, Bekanse, Ranza Samunga te soha, Te anta o Bekanse, Bekanse, Maha Bekanse, Bekanse, Ranza Samunga te soha, Te anta o Bekanse, Bekanse, Maha Bekanse. So you can see I've started to add the chords underneath. Um, and it's really important with this that rather than trying to count beats, because it's actually a 17 beat phrase, which is very unusual. It's more like a kind of Middle Eastern or Eastern European or Indian rhythm. We don't often come across those kinds of rhythms in these simple songs. So rather than trying to count 17 beats and figure out where the beat is, I suggest that we just follow the syllables and make a note of where the chord changes are relevant to the syllables. And that gives it a really nice organic flow and a kind of a lilt as we're going along. Um, otherwise you can get a bit too much stuck up here trying to count the beats. So let's just assume that you've learnt the mantra and then we'll figure out which chords go with which parts of the mantra. So, te, te anta om bekanse, bekanse. The first part of the mantra is quite similar to the Hail to the Buddha, to the medicine Buddha, because it's basically an A minor chord, but those parts where it goes down, I'm just articulating with this finger rather than throwing in a whole G chord there. So, te anta om bekanse, bekanse. My hand stays in the A minor shape here. And this finger just moves down to this string to te anta om bekanse. Now you can just stick on these low notes. Te anta om bekanse, bekanse. 
but uh, because these fingers are in the A minor position, you could play any other notes there, and that's going to work as well. So that's the first part. One, two, three, four. Now we need to just change to E minor and Maha Bekanse after the word Maha, that's when we change to E minor and then back to A minor. Maha Bekanse, Bekanse, and then we change to E minor again. Ranza Samungati, when we go to the Sa part of the Samungati word, then we change to E minor again. Maha Bekanse, Bekanse, Ranza Samungati, so. So ha, we go A minor G, so ha. And that's it basically. De anta um, be can say, be can say, maha be can say, be can say, runs a samungati so ha. The real key to playing this is that samungati, because that's the regular kink in the rhythm. And that's where we need to go very clearly down to E minor together with the sa sound. Ranza samungati so ha. Okay, so I think I've broken it down now into all the constituent parts that I can. So let's just try it through a few times. I'll play it quite slowly in the beginning and I'll count us in. One, two, three, four. Te anta um bekanse, bekanse, maha bekanse, bekanse. Ranza samungati so ha. Ah, you see what I did there? I forgot to breathe in the middle and then I got to the end and I had to snatch a breath before coming back in with the te anta. So these things are all very open to interpretation. You don't have to stick with any one particular formula. Um, I'm just giving you a guide as to what works as a kind of reference point, really. Um, and one other little detail that I noticed once I got into the kind of swing of playing it, I noticed something, which is that... Um, which is that when I do the first so ha, which is A minor to G, so ha, I'm actually staying on G there and coming back to A minor a little bit later. So ha, de anta om. So the om, I'm coming back to the A minor right there. I think when we first, when the mantra first comes out, the Portuguese words, the link there, the join of the two sections is maybe not quite the same as once the mantra gets going and it starts to loop back. So let's just check that. Um, So the first time when we first hit that mantra is very much a case of as I showed you in the beginning when I was explaining this third section. But then once we start to loop around, once you've gone so ha, you can stay on the G until you hit om, and om will be the A minor. So ha de anta om, and that's the kind of one if you like. De anta om be can se, be can se. Okay, so what we'll do now is I'm going to just play through this mantra a few times, a little bit more slowly, just to really check that we understand how those chords fit underneath the melody. And then we'll do the song all the way through once. Okay, here we go. So this is the last section, just to check you've got it.
One, two, three, four. De anda onde canse, de canse, maha de canse, de canse. Run the sun, got to so hard. De anda onde canse, de canse, maha de canse, de canse. Run the sun, got to so hard. De anda onde canse, de canse, maha de canse, de canse. Run the sun, got to so hard. De anda onde canse, de canse, maha de Okay, so um, you notice there, if you're following closely, that I'm giving myself options of two ways of playing this actually. The first way is the way I showed it to you first, which is just simply staying with the very clear changes from A minor to E minor, back to A minor, back to E minor, like this. And the second way, which is a little bit more detailed, is you can just articulate a few more of those notes between the G and the A. Okay, so you can always play back the video and pause it in certain places if any of this is not clear. But hopefully I've covered all of the important points to help you play along to this song. So let's just take a little um, breath to recover from the energy of the tutorial and then I'll count you in and we can play the song all the way through together, including the little instrumental um, sort of introduction that I play before we start singing. Okay, here we go. Might help as if I just um, play a note on my Japanese temple bowl here to settle the mood. After all, it's a very sacred song and the mantra is a very powerful mantra. Okay, here we go. So this is the Medicine Buddha, which is um, the mantra for Bai Sai Sha Guru, who's the king of healing. And he's the Blue Buddha, whose entire body, all of the skin of his face and his entire body is deep blue, the color of Lapis Lazuli, which is the color associated with healing. Sentient peace, lift up the heart and shine. 
Suffering and sickness May all sentient beings Lift up the heart And shine in the light May all sentient beings Be free from suffering and sickness May all sentient beings Lift up the heart And shine in the light May all sentient beings Be free from suffering
So you will have noticed I jumped up the octave a little bit towards the end. That's because this mantra, sometimes we sing it for a long time, and there can be many people singing, there can be percussion, uh, drums, different instruments, and when the energy starts to really build, although it sounds a little bit odd here in this room by myself, sometimes it just naturally, you want to just give a little bit more, and just jumping up the octave um, really helps to just sort of connect to that next level, that next wave of energy that's contained within the mantra. And then in terms of coming out of the mantra, it can be very difficult because ideally we'd chant it 108 times, but that takes quite a while and um, not everybody's gonna be doing that. So you might chant it 20 times, for example, or 30 times. Um, I like to do multiples of 108 or rather uh, divisions of 108. So half of 108 is 54 and half of 54 is um what's it what is it 25 plus four is 20 what's half of 54 25 plus 2 27 yeah of course because these are multiples of nine so uh, three times nine is 27 so you can't really do half of 27 but if you think of it in terms of multiples of nine because it's basically like a mala is divided, there's 108 beads on a mala and divided into 12 lots of nine. So you could chant the mala, uh, the mantra nine times or 18 times, 27. Um, and in terms of coming out of the mantra, the best thing to do is just naturally slow down. You have to know in advance that you're gonna to come to an end. And then you just take one or two times through the mantra to just gradually slow down. It's like putting the brake on. And then in terms of actually stopping, we're going to finish with the sound OM. So the last time through will be like this. <laughs> So strictly speaking, we're not doing the last mantra all the way through. We're just doing the first four syllables, Te Anta Om. But for me, that's just what naturally occurs. And um, I find that's a beautiful way to, to bring things to a close. Sometimes, in my experience, what happens is you can be in a circle where everybody's really carried away by the energy of the moment. And even if you gradually slow down the mantra, the people around you might not notice. So sometimes you have to kind of just cut through and finish the mantra by stopping and doing the final Te Anta Om. And I've done that a few times myself. It can be a bit brutal, but you'll find that the energy is just left hanging in the air anyway and nothing is lost. And that sounds a bit like this. Te Anta Om, a little bit of sort of kerfuffle because you've stopped and no one else has so you prepare to do a nice long om and then you'll find that by the end of that om everybody's figured out what's happening and they've joined in with you and then we all finish together especially if you do the classic om which is um it has several parts to it finishing with the mm sound because when we sing om a lot of people go om or om or om but actually um the way I learned in the classical way is there's several sounds which combine to make that, that sound. So, oh, the little ah at the beginning, and then the o, oh, the main part, and then changing to a oo oh sound. And this is like the movement of outward energy offering to the, to the world and then receiving back and closing. So, oh.
and that gentle mmm sounds like a kind of closure. So, So thank you. I hope um, that's clarified things a little bit with regard to the Medicine Buddha song. Thank you. Cura, 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 cura 
Someone got the soul, how they don't know.